Good day and welcome back to my channel. This is the final episode in the KV2 series and in this one I'm pretty much going to just go over the snow effects. Um, it is all new to me. Uh, I've only done very very small bits of snow effect on little tiny 28 millimeter bases. Uh, I really haven't tried anything on either a scenic base or a um, a model of this size, so I'm going to be learning. So let's see what we get. Uh, I'll go ahead and talk about a couple the product here, and let's go to it. I can tell here I'm using AK Snow Sprinkles, and I had no idea what this ended up looking like or what it was going to look like, so I tried it out on just this piece of spare plastic, and I also put down some dark earth, the same stuff we use for mud, so I'd have something to try it on. I let it dry and that gave me a look of okay what I pretty much think I can expect so I, it, it sort of gave me an idea of how to apply it and then what I should be able to expect when it dries right so with that said I'm gonna go ahead and cut into the actual putting on of the stuff all right so we go ahead and get in here now I sped this stuff up to just a little bit um, but for the most part, I just put this on the same way I put on this, the uh, mud effects, right? Just put a little bit on the brush and then dab it in. Now, this is the same brush I use for this, the mud effects. It's the same brush I've been using for these kinds of products. They wash out fairly well with water. Um, I, it, and I wanted to see pretty much what, what it was going to look like. Now, for the most part, I'm keeping in mind, I'm not trying to make this thing covered in snow. I don't want this thing baked. I don't want the whole uh, vehicle just coated and packed on snow. So I'm kind of being careful where the snow would be, where it would continue to stick um, and maybe freeze and stay put. So that kind of thing. That's what I'm, I'm thinking about here as I go through where I'm going to put the snow on. So what I do here is I just work my way around the vehicle you know in the running gear but i'm also going to do the back the front and then some on the top i'm not going to really pack it in a lot of spots on the top uh because we'll we'll get to that with a, a different things but i do pick some points where i feel the snow would stick and stay right so that's what i do just make those choices and then move on the snow sprinkles have dried and you can see that this very much is not what it looked like when I put it on. Um, a lot of the medium has gone clear, and we have very little sprinkle left. And that's actually not bad. Um, they're more of an ice sprinkle than a snow sprinkle, which is sort of what I kind of wanted anyway. I didn't really want a lot of packed snow, but, you know, I got what I was after. So I packed a little bit of snow, you saw I did some here, and it sort of gives this... The, it, the melted melted and refrozen sort of look to it um, which is kind of what I wanted so that'll make a good base for that the next step for this then will be to go ahead and put on the tracks and then put on the final weathering for the the tracks the wheels and then any snow I have up on here. You can see the, um, I've gone back, I've done the oil work here. I really don't have this filthy. I do have some oil stains and mud stains from like work, from having worked on the, you know, maybe worked on the engine or worked in, the, in these here. But I don't have a lot of real heavy weathering on it. And that's kind of what I wanted. You know, this is, um, it's been washed off by weather. I do have it slightly faded and discolored but not rusted all the heck and that's where I'm going with that that's what we wanted like that said I do plan to have snow on the vehicle and there's a couple of pictures of tanks with snow um, that I'm looking at that I think I'm gonna go with I'm gonna put them up here Right, so those are some, some pictures of tanks, most of them German, because the Germans are the ones that took pictures, um, in the snow, with snow on them. So now this is a curious combination of different tests. So 
all of this material is this. This is wood and seeing snow snowflakes now. So this is a much more powdery snow type material. Um, I do have some other snow material in my box, but it's much more granular. Um, it's more like sugar. Right, I don't have it quite right at handy, but it's much more granular, and much more like sugar, and it's not really what I wanted. I wanted something that's more powdery. So I'm looking at that. But what I've done, this part right here was the test for the snow sprinkles, for this AK snow sprinkles. Here I used um, for the the base or for the binder, I used matte varnish. All I did was put down a layer of matte varnish and let the snow stick to it. Here, I used PVA. And there's actually two layers of PVA. This is one layer of PVA and this is two layers of PVA. Um, and, you know, it actually, you, and this was a layer of PVA on top of the snow sprinkles. Okay, so it, it showed me what I want. These two things are slightly different in that those are the mix of PVA and really all I'm using is you know this Wolverine PVA it's just white PVA glue stuff that will dry clear but when it goes down and this is one of the things I'm going to point out is when I put this down it looked like this at first and then when it dried you can see it's a little more clear and a little you know a little more uh, translucent so the snow sort of, you see a little more chunk to the snow. Here and here is using PVA glue with a drop of this paint in it. So basically I put a drop of PVA glue on my palette, hit it with this so that the glue when it dries is white. That's the effect I got there. That's the effect I got there. So I think I am going to use a combination of this and this on here to get the effects that we saw on those vehicles. Um, we will see. Um, this is again, this is me experimenting because I'm not sure the, the right answer to get me the right effect. But to go, go in going for that that look let me see if I have my spot on my palette I'm trying to see like I said right here is PVA glue there that's the PVA glue with the um, with the paint mixed in and that's what that looks like without the snow on it and that's I think the effect that I'm going to look for but again like I said we're looking for the result of or the, the like the vehicles that we see in those those photographs. So we're this is going to be an experiment, and I'm, I'm just kind of kind of run with it. Um, again, I'm happy with the icy look that I have here. And now it's just a matter of packing the snow into the crevices. So we will move on to putting on the tracks, putting this together, and then doing that last bit, and then finally buttoning it all up. So let's go take care of that. For the record, this was fiddly as heck. I'm just saying. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and make sure I'm looking at the right orientation. And I have it oriented right because it would be just my luck. I'd get it backwards. It's also important. Make sure that you're doing that. If you're going to put this on together, make sure you, you go through all the effort. Um, again, I've painted the tracks. I did the, the two double wash thing and just sort of dusted the uh, dusted the tracks with um, what's the word I'm looking for. Graphite, there we go, to get the to wear in. So now I gotta put these on. And I am gonna tell you, this was nuts. Um product got onto product. I, I sound like a hairdresser. <laughs> the the product got onto all of the the spokes for all of the wheels, and I found getting this thing to slide on was was difficult. Um, maybe it was a matter of me making sure that those weren't clean enough. I don't know. It just, it, 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 
the the glue seams that hold all of the pieces together for all of the tracks were uh, weak. They were okay, but they were weak. You can see I'll continue to fiddle with these till I get them in. Um, I'm not convinced, especially with these Lincoln length. I think with the Lincoln length tracks, it just makes more sense to put them on at the end. Um, for the full length tracks, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, I need to do more tracked vehicles to figure out what what I like as far as a method. Uh, but I gotta tell you, that was fiddly. So I'm just gonna speed through all this, and and I could. This is actually only here for comedic effect. So feel free to skip the next next step. This was just fiddle and fiddle and fiddle and fiddle. It eventually got on. Um, had to do some some work on it, and that's that's really all it was. So. If you want to try this method, feel free. The, I'm, I'm pretty much just showing you some of the grief I went through to get it get it done, and maybe you can learn from my mistakes because that's you know everybody learns from mistakes. So hey, you know I learned a lot with this. So maybe those of you who are watching will want to try it and learn from from what I'm doing. And I'm really only showing this bit because I had a couple of people ask me. These are the mud guards that you have to put in, and I really didn't get good video here, so I apologize. But I actually had to fiddle to get those in, but those did go on. Um, you just have to put those on after you put your tracks on. So don't forget. Otherwise, you know, it'll be missing. And you know what? You'll get all your stuff on and then realize, oh crud, I gotta go back and do that. But yes, yes, I did do it. And then once that's done, go back and weather the wheels. Wheels and tracks. Uh, I intentionally did not do the weathering on the tracks. I wanted to see where things were going to be once I, I got them on and what, what sort of the rest of the vehicle looked like before I did it instead of trying to do those in two different, different ways. Um, this will have traveled through mud and frozen and snow. The, the want dirt in it first and then I'll lay in some snow. Uh, again, I'm going for that, a specific look that I hope I will end up with at the end. So basically, yeah, just repeat what you did on the vehicle to the tracks. So now it's time to go ahead and do the poofier snow. And again, this is poofier snow, you know, the, the powder, the stuff is going to have more of a powder than an iced look. And again, this is the, what I presented earlier. This is taking a drop of the Wolverine PVA, mixing up a little bit of this white paint and then layering it on. Uh, again, I'm going to speed through this a little bit because I've, I've kind of explained it. And I'll just sort of show the method that I'm using to put it on. And really all you're doing is you're making, it's just like laying up any other powder product. It's put a little bit of your glue or binder, whatever you want to use, in the spots that you need it to be. And again, I'm choosing corners. I'm choosing places where snow would pack and stay, um, not get blown off. And I'm trying to think, right? I'm trying to think how this goes. But really all I'm doing, take a little bit of the paint and glue, put it in place. Now I'm not working my whole way around because I don't want this, you know, the thing with PVA, PVA forms that skin because it dries fairly quickly on the surface and then it doesn't stick. So now I just take the powder and sprinkle it on. And what I find, what I will do, right, is I, I kind of like the way it looks in some ways you know, the, the, the interesting thing is the way it fell and formed as I was dropping this on sort of informed how I was going to do the rest of it. And again, I chose more spot application rather than like overlaying it. Um, <clears throat> you know, later on the scenic base, I will do a lot more heavy layers. But here on this, I want the snow to have blown off the vehicle for the most part. You know, the crew will keep it cleaner since you know, you're dealing with the, the machine and you know, you're not brushing it off so much as you know, you're moving and the wind's blowing and whatever. So the snow is pretty much going to find certain spots to stick and stay in those spots. So those are the choices I'm making here. Now I'm also packing some of it here in the tracks because theoretically, or at least the thought I have here is the vehicle is going to drive over packed snow. It's going to pack into the tracks. I'm also concentrating the packed snow in the back. So there's a lot more fresh quote-unquote snow on the back part of the tracks than it is in the front and here I'm just cleaning up you know, that's why you do it on paper so you can pick this stuff back up um, but that's 
you know, sort of how I'm doing it. And I just keep going over and over till I get the result that I'm after. And with that, the KV2 is now done. Um, it was quite the learning experience for me. It was a very, very entertaining kit to put together. The build was very, very straightforward. It's very much like the SC-152. So these Trumpeter, K Trumpeter KV series kits are absolutely phenomenal. They're they are a breeze to put together. There's enough work to do that it's, it, it's enough for a challenge, but it's not so much that it's just scary or just ridiculous, right? You're having little tiny photo etch parts just because they're you can have little tiny photo etch parts. I think there's the way these are put together, the detail that's uh, on them is is very very nice for for the subject and for for working together, right? So I was really really happy. I really enjoyed the experience. Um, the uh, this and, and and I think you'll see that I, I spent probably more time doing weathering than I did with the actual build part. But you know, the, the, it was a very very fun fun journey. Um, when it comes to weathering, that was fun. That, that was a lot of fun. I tried a bunch of different things that I've never done before, and that was a good, a good experience. The hairspray chipping, right? So the hairspray chipping, I'd never really done it before, and it chipped a whole lot more than I expected it to. And I feel like probably it did so because of the white that I use. So I use this model air, excuse me, I use this model air from Vallejo and I feel like the water actually reactivated the white rather than just the hairspray. So it actually was washing off the hairspray or excuse me, washing off the white, which was kind of cool. Um, you know, the, the end result I got is nice. It's just worn off, right? You, I, you have the look of sort of hastily put on white just sort of hastily or, or just being washed off I do like that the way this is weathered and the way the the wash came off is it kind of tells a story uh, you know what some of the the cool things about building models right tell a story with your model what what's why is that thing there what what does that tell us about the model so you know the the water washing off from the or snow melting on the top of the turret housing and water washing off and, and rolling down the fact that there's no water or no snow on the engine deck because the you know i guess maybe maybe the engine deck's warm right and it, it pools and washes off um so that was cool i think the only build part i'd have a challenge with is the way i did the tracks that was a new experience it was really fiddly I don't know that it was less fiddly than just trying to feed the tracks onto wheels that were already on. So next tank I do, we'll see what maybe works that way. So it was, it was nice, it was nice to try it. So, you know, and again, it's uh, something to try again next time and see how that goes. Um, the other thing is, you know, like I said, I, I try not to buy a whole lot of product, but you know, product, but these these two things from AK, so the, the dark earth and the snow sprinkles really, really gave me what I was looking for. You know, so those of you who saw the 152, I'd used a light earth for the, the mud underneath the tracks. This dark earth really gave me what I was after, right? So yeah, and hopefully that'll mesh in with what I'm doing. Now a lot of my other a lot of my models tend to be miniatures or, or you know, um you know, gaming miniatures and this stuff would be is sort of a one shot one shot stop for doing bases for those so that's i'm really excited about these and they're fun to use and they're actually not too terribly expensive and there's probably enough in here to last me forever um cool thing is the the way they come out the the difference between this and the the snowflakes that are from like woodland scenics right the stuff here um, this is like for tracks for train, you know, train scenery type. And the, look, they come in this giant bottle. And since I'm not doing train scenery, that's probably going to last me in my life. But there's this really cool difference between these snowflakes and those. And they kind of give a different look, right? So you can see it on the track too. Frozen and wet and damp. And, and I really like the way that that welded or melded. So it, it actually came out fairly well. 
um, you know, it, it kind of gave me what I was after. So it was a good, good thing to learn from. Uh, what else? I mean, I could probably waffle on here for a while about this, but the, the tank was actually very fun to do. And I'm, you know, looking forward to finishing up what's, what's left of it. And, you know, now, now with the KV2 done, I move on to the rest of, of the, the scene. So there's this I, I have next up is going to be the, uh, Soviet tankers, the, the figures. And then after the figures are done, we'll actually do the scenic base. And you know, the base I have, I kind of am thinking of a, a mud and snow kind of look. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still melding that in my head. But, you know, this, what I've done here, set the tone for what that needs to look like. And this may change a little bit once the base is done, because I may need to add more more snow or more mud to the vehicle depending on what that ends up being but i really enjoyed this i hope that you know those of you who watched actually enjoyed it as well you know all of my all of my kit builds are are, are like i said the the name of my model is you know, my name of my channel is modeling adventures so it is my adventure this is me learning so i hope that it helps other people say hey you try that or hey let's not try that let's not do it that way um do feel free to put in commentary. I love suggestions. Um, feedback is great. Again, I am I am not one who is so uh, focused in my way that my way is the way, and my way is the way I did for this model. So um, I'm always open to suggestions and, and listening to folks who have experience or have ideas. And you know, maybe I'll try those next time. So with that said, I will go ahead and put up some, some high-res pictures of the KV-2. And then I will move on to what's left, you know, the next part of the step, next next part of the project. Please excuse my daughter having a very excited uh, uh, conversation in the background. Um, but, you know, please go ahead and uh, I will move on now to the next, next series. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope this was entertaining. Until next time, happy modeling.